Morning everybody, it's Phil here from Telford Koi Pond. Um, welcome to a quite misty, drab, um, but quite crisp Sunday morning in Telford. We've just come back from walking the uh, dog for a good hour, so um, it's quite quite weird really. The fog's quite thick or the mist's quite thick and it's absolutely silent, so uh, very nice walk this morning. Um, today's video just a very short catch up just so you can see where I am at the moment. So um, if you want to pan round, this is what my uh, pond looks like for the, uh, for the well it's what it's going to look like for most of this winter at the moment as you know I've got big plans for the filter um, by next year I'm going to build it up and have a proper filter room in there but for now it's uh, it's just covered like this there's three three covers on there um, and what I was finding was every time I was going into it lifting the covers up because there is gaps in between the covers but the the floor inside was really really wet but it felt like it was too wet for just rain coming through because it tended to be wet when there wasn't really a lot of rain which is why I've got the covers on um, but since then I found out that both of the corners where the block work joins the slab but particularly over the back corner I've been watching it, putting tissue paper down, doing all sorts of things and basically when it was raining, the rain wasn't really coming in through the top it was actually leaching in through the um, block works so um, that magnificent product G4 spent a couple of hours last weekend G4 in just around the bottom corners I'll show you when we go in there, just around the bottom corners, about 6 inches high uh, and it stopped all that straight away so there we go but anyway, waffling on, this is, uh, this is what the pond looks like now. If you watch earlier videos you will have seen how I made these covers. These have been, well, so far, bear in mind they've only been on a few weeks, but they are doing an absolutely cracking job. Um, so temperature today is 12 degrees, we've just checked, the monitor over there. Um, and the air, air source heat pump is set at 19. But this is doing such a good job overnight, the, the heat pump is just not coming on that much. Yeah, so it's saying at the moment the temperature in the pond is 19.5 whereas I've got it set to heat at 19 so the covers are doing a cracking job, they really are which is great so I don't leave them on all day <coughs> like most of us it, uh, it does spoil the hobby so um, I do come out every morning and take them off And they are very lightweight as you know. So I'll just stack them up here. The fish are still very, very active and still eating a lot. Which is fantastic. Two new additions to the pond have really made themselves at home. is definitely definitely encouraging the others up to hand feed there we go, last one so they're doing a really really good job at the minute I'll leave that one on permanently I don't know if you can see the mist coming off the water now slightly. I'll leave that one on permanently because the auto feeder is still set up and it is still set up and feeding three times a day. Um, obviously at weekends and stuff I'm in and out and in and out doing stuff all the while um, but in the week when I'm at work, even though I am working from home it's not always convenient just to nip out and throw some food in so I've left that on. But yeah, hopefully you can see the fish are uh, is bigger. The fish are really, really, really great. Bottom of the pond needs hoovering, so that's my uh, one of the jobs for today, or perhaps next weekend. But I'll leave it there for now, and I'll take the covers off the uh, filter bay, and then I'll come back to you, and we'll just have a quick run through, um, see how that's looking. See you in a bit. So I've just took the um, cover off. Um, it's a bit of a faff but to be honest it only takes five minutes and it's well worth it. 
uh, and from those of you that have followed me from the start you'll realise that's the tarp that when we were doing all the block work was on top of the pergola that was there keeping all the uh, filter bay and everything dry while we were building all the block work so it's just doubled up basically it's really good um, so filter as I say nothing's happened to this yet it's still the same still got the temporary covers on but as you can see there's sort of a five mil gap all the way across and obviously when it does rain Although the water doesn't tend to pool, it does run off. Obviously there's rain going through and that's what I thought was um, getting the floor of the uh, in here really wet. But as it turns out, it wasn't. So it's still doing a cracking job anyway. And I still use that bit of pipe so I can leave this door wide open. Um, but yeah, all I did, what, what, what was happening was, every time I came in here, there was a pool of water from that back wall, just all the way down the middle of here. And over the other side, it was sort of the same. And I thought it was just water coming through the cracks or, or coming through the sides or whatever, but what it turns out, it was just the two corners, the two back corners. Um, I mean, you can see the block, the mortar isn't perfect, but what you can see I've done there is just put a strip of um, G4 on the inside and the outside, so just a paintbrush width really, top and bottom, and that instantly just sealed the uh, block work and uh, stopped it straight away. And you can see the same uh, if you have a look at the other side as well, if you have a look at that other corner. So I've, I've gone all the way around, so I thought why well, stop, to be honest with you, I might as well just seal all the bottom. But this was the worst one up here, it was, uh, it was coming right in, and it was quite a lot. So the, the green drip trays you can see on there is, uh, I keep them there because there's condensation on the hose pipe coming from outside and it just catches it. There's, there's only the odd drips, um, but it does a good job. So there's nothing really much changed in here. The one thing I would mention though is what I've really, really noticed is since putting the tarp on, when I open this up, when I come in here, it will have gone down now. Yeah. Saying, uh, saying the same as outside but when I came in when I first take the covers off it's 16 degrees in here so the heat of the air pumps what you know all the electrics and all that sort of stuff is obviously being trapped in here which is a real bonus to be honest with you so I was expecting this to get really really cold I've got all plans for putting uh, little heaters in here and all sorts but we'll see anyway um, the drum filter as you would expect, hasn't missed a heartbeat. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, this piece of plastic, if you wonder why there's a piece of plastic here again, it was the drips coming through here, were sort of coming down and <laughs> dripping right on the controller. So I'll just put that on there to, uh, to stop any drips, but doesn't need it. So as you'll see, the water, the water temperature is reading at 19 degrees, which is what it's set at. And if I just have a look how many cleans it's done in the last uh, 24 hours, it's set to clean every half an hour, so obviously it should be about uh, 48. So 46. And that's because in every, in every hour it does um, it misses the time cleans out, it does a sensor clean, so it waits like for the water to get right down to the bottom of the sensor and then cleans just to check it's all working. So yeah, I mean I'll take the cover off just Watch it out wet it learn. Sturdy top. So yeah, everything's fine, everything's working like clockwork. So there's 80 litres of uh, Helix 13 in there. As you can see it's all a nice colour. The last lot I put in, so I put I obviously put uh, put 60 litres in when the original, when we commissioned it all and I've put another 20 litres in at a later date which is why you can see the slightly two different colours um, but the drum filter is absolutely fine as I say it's cleaning every half an hour at the minute if I wasn't heated I'd probably um, change the time intervals to about once an hour because I am, I'm leaving it like it is at the minute but yeah, it's, it's really really good I don't know whether we'll, uh, let me just take one of these off so you can see what uh, see if it's captured any see if you can see what's inside there. So it's not even that mucky, you know, there's just not that much stuff in, coming out of the pond at the minute. If you have a look in the actual water, 
obviously that's where it all, all the gunk collects and then it goes through the screens um, there's just nothing in there you know there's even though I'm feeding quite heavily because the pond's heated there's just nothing you know it's brilliant really and these are fantastic these screens so easy it's, you know the whole drum filter really is so easy to change the settings once you understand it um, replace these I did go out and buy um, a set of these from Cotswold Koi the other week I thought well you know I'd, I'd, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with these I'm not expecting to have to replace them soon but I thought I'd just like to get them in for, for backup uh, and the bonus of this compared to some of the other drum systems is if there's a hole punched through one of these you just replace one of these panels whereas on some of the other drum um, systems it's the whole thing you've got to replace so brilliant that's working splendidly at the minute let's put the cover back on Obviously as soon as you um, put the cover back on because of the magnetic sensors in here um, the error code, error code 11 which says the, the lid's not on stops flashing, it goes back to the temperature um, The individual unit um, those eagle eyed amongst you might notice there's an extra pipe in here This pipe, what I've done um, I've turned the air pipe, I've turned the air in the pond right down because I don't want to chill the water, even though I, didn't, I did it before I realised it was so warm in here. So I've put a, a wide piece on this air pump. So it's only a 20 litre an hour air pump anyway, but it was still churning the water up quite a lot, so I've put a wide piece on. So this is just, uh, doesn't do anything, you can probably hear it. There's air coming out of it, and I can just, you know, for, the less I want in the pond, the more I can have coming through here. Um, I normally just have it down the side, but to be honest, the, the hissing annoys me, so if I shove it in there, you can't hear it anymore. Anyway, so that's that's a little tip there, and the, uh, let's just get this out. So, in the individual unit, so I trickle in, still going at about um, 150 millilitres per minute and that equates to around about 17% complete change of pond water every week um, I mean you can just see by the, you know, looking at the water quality in here it's just, it's crystal clear, everything is so clear the drum does such a, an absolutely fantastic job UV's on now what I did do yesterday, um, and apologies I should have filmed it and I just you know, you know, when you come out to fettle and you just end up doing something and then you think after. What I did yesterday was um, did a big purge on the bottom drains. So somebody actually mentioned um, in one of my previous videos where I did the insulation on all the pipes. They did say, um, you know, how you're going to get to your taps on your ball valves. Um, I didn't think I'd need to do anything with them, but to be honest with you, they were covered over completely. And all I did, sharp knife just slit all the way down there and then just push the push it in so there's there's no you know there's no real messing about or anything as I say just big slit down there big slit down there push the push the insulation in and now I can get it both the ball valves as well really really easily and this is such so 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 easy to uh, to purge the bottom drain it's, um, Now, just so I have to stop talking when I'm doing something because I can't do two things at once. Um, to, to purge the bottom drain, all I do, very simply, turn the two pumps off. Water obviously equalises throughout the whole system. Turn that valve off, which goes from here through the heat pump and into the pond at the back. Turn this valve off, which goes through the filter and then returns in these two things here. And then over here, just turn the skimmer line off and turn the bottom uh, bottom valve, sorry, the ball valve for the bottom drain off so the main feed into the filters and then that's completely isolated all the filter and then there's a, a drain valve here slide valve which is very simple just turn it 90 degrees pull it up and that empties this one out and there's the same at the back of here so I'll just reach down here pull it out pull it up and that'll empty this at the same time so that water from that one comes down the back and then it connects with this one here come into that pipe so they both basically go down that tube and into waste 
So I literally pull the valves, let the let this uh, let the drum filter and the individual unit completely drain off, shut the valves again, and then just open the bottom drain, and all the water comes flooding to flooding through. I did it once, and there was a bit of sediment come through. Um, I, I expected it to be more, so I um, I did it again, and there was. Uh, there was, there was virtually nothing come through, so I, uh, I basically uh, called it a day then, that was good. So I'm going to stop here a minute, um, gather my thoughts and then I'll catch up with you in a second. Okay, cheers. Um, so yes, yeah, carrying on from before, just talking about water and water flows. I've had a couple of um, questions asked about how quickly I turn my water over and things like that. So I just thought I'd spend five minutes just talking through that very quickly. Um, I'm sure everybody's got one of these. This is my little black pond book and it's got everything in from day one of uh, the pond build. It's even got some diagrams and test results and all sorts of things. So uh, I did try, I watched um, Cat and I, so Steve and Cat. Um, I, I do find Cat's um, water testing quite interesting uh, and I was really impressed with the fact she'd got it all on the computer and she got it all mapped and logged and stuff like that. Um, so I spent half an hour setting up um, you know, a similar sort of thing <laughs> and to be honest I've never used it because I just, I just have my book with me everywhere, you know, whenever I'm in the pond I've got my book with me so I just tend to write it down, so yes. Um, so water anyway, just because I mentioned it, so I'm sure everybody knows anyway but my main, my koi pond is 2,500 gallons, so about 11,400 litres. Um, Water changes, I mentioned before, running at 150 millilitres per minute, that's 1,500 litres or just over per week, which works out at 13.3% of the entire pond changed every week. If I, if I run it sometimes a bit higher during the summer at 200, um, that's, uh, it works out to 300, I can't remember, I can't remember, anyway, 17.7%. So it just it just turns it up a bit, but during the summer, what I have done recently is also um, talking of the flow rates. I've turned the flow rates down. So again, you'll see it's all worked out. Blah blah blah. So two pumps. So I've got the twelve thousand litre an hour, and I've got the eighteen thousand litre an hour. The twelve thousand litre an hour is running at forty percent. So 12,000 litres now are running at 40% and I know you've got to take off some for the pipes and bits and pieces. That's 4,800 litres per hour. The air source heat pump needs a flow of 4,000, a nominal flow of 4,700. So because that only feeds the heat pump, I can turn it up and down and up and down and you know I can really get the heat pump balanced just using the pump, which is brilliant. I haven't got to mess about with the bypass valves or anything like that. So really it's only the 1,800 litre an hour pump that I turn up and down so in the summer so I've also got that running at 40% which is 7,200 litres per hour so the combined in the summer is 2,640 gallons per hour so basically I'm turning off the entire contents of the pond just over the entire contents of the pond um, every hour so I've just turned it down so that this one, the 18,000, is only running at 30%, which is 5,400. So I'm turning over 2,400 gallons um, every hour. So that's basically just under. And then when I get into like proper cold weather, I'll turn that down to 20%, which is only 1,800 gallons um, in, you know, for, for that particular pump. So it's Sorry, where am I? Da, da, da. Yeah, 1,800 gallons in total for both pumps, so it's just slowing it down. And obviously I can turn one off if, if, if I want to, but uh, I think it's important to, to keep a, a bit of speed, particularly as it's heated, particularly as they're still feeding and very, very active. Um, and the other thing I would just mention, somebody mentioned about the water bill. What was my, what was my water bill? I've had any water bills yet. Um, our normal six month water bill is £250. For the six months, yeah, is that right, Claire? Yeah. So we've just had the last six months. So bear in mind, the last six months is the pond. So that's sort of um, filling it up to a couple of feet after the fiberglassing had gone off, just to stop water lifting it up, cleaning it all out, sluicing that away, half filling it again, doing a proper clean of all the fiberglass, sluicing that all away, and then finally filling the pump up. 
and then obviously trickle in trickle out at the at the right and don't forget I was using my um, the RL um, filter that I bought from the Coventry Coy Show for about a month, month and a half, six weeks perhaps so anyway the bill was 450 so I don't think that 450 for that period bearing in mind it was all the pond starting it up, emptying it, cleaning it, starting it up, properly filling it up I don't think that was too bad to be honest with you um, obviously that was, should go down uh, quite significantly now that that's done it should just be the the, uh, the running costs so when we get the next bill I'll obviously um, tell you what it is and we'll, we'll see how, it actually, how much it actually costs to run this pond so that was it just a little bit of, a, of an extra bit um, and that's it really I mean there's not, not a lot more to tell you um, I'm not going to do much else on the pond today I'll try and keep the videos coming whether it's I don't know once a week or once a fortnight but you know keep watching thank you Thank you to everybody that does, you know, it makes it worthwhile me putting these videos out when I see all your uh, comments and things like that, so it's really good. I do appreciate people that have subscribed. If you're watching this for the first time, then obviously there's a huge back catalogue you can go and have a look at, so please have a look at that, and if you like it, subscribe. Um, and hopefully, a little bit of a teaser, um, I don't know whether you've seen um, Devon Coy, his latest video. He's just had a fantastic laser cutting machine, um, and I've ordered uh, I've ordered a piece of uh, work off Martin. So hopefully, when I do the next video, um, I'll show you what that is as well. And that's that's quite exciting. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. If you're watching the Moto GP, enjoy that. If you're watching the Formula One, come on, Lewis, um, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.